Let's call the meeting to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Bryce Steiner. Yes. Jason Frank. Yes. Steve Jordan. Yes. Jimmy Reinhardt. Yes. Dean Reister. Yes. Brent Smith here. All right. So then approval of the minutes. I'll make the motion, yes. I'll second. All right, so. Bryce Steiner. Yes. Jason Franks. Yes. Steve Jordan. Yes. Jimmy Reinhardt. Yes. Gene Reister. Yes. <coughs> so then, financial report would be next. So if there's any questions. So do you know a Paris item will do for eleven hundred dollars. No, I don't. If but you, when is it, Kenny? So if you want to make a note, Kenny, we can ask Kevin. I don't, I mean, yeah, since I he's not here. Yeah. Brian might know. Or no. Brian? No. Oh. Yeah, Brian. No, he's hiding in the corner. No. <laughs> Did you say Pierce Automotive? Yeah. Yeah. Kevin's asked that when you have questions on the financial, if you email him a couple days before the meeting so that he can provide you with an answer with all the stuff and everything he pays, it's kind of hard for us to remember unless it's something very significant. Okay. I can assure you that that was probably a repair to one of the cruisers or something. I mean, that would be the reason why. Can't, can't give you details, but... I'll make a motion to approve. One second. All right, so Kenny Reinhardt. Yes. Yes. Bryce Steiner. Yes. Jason Frank. Yes. Steve Jordan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. You are you are a visitor for tonight. Hi everyone. Hi. Hey. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Just tell I... you know me to change slides over. Yeah, sure. <coughs> anyway, can I switch this one? Would that be okay? Sure. So I'm not sitting on top of you. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Well, so I'm here today as a member of our park board. So myself, Michelle Dooley, Nancy Lisi, and then Keith West, who's not able to be here today. Uh, we've been working on a project. Um, as you can see, this is Riverside Veterans Memorial Park. We have multiple discussions just kind of talking about how we can make sure everything is cohesive. So it, it all blends together. And as different organizations in our town propose projects, um, for example, Rotary with Disc Golf or someone wants to put in a basketball court, making sure it's not placed in a spot where we might want something else further down the road. So um, there was a survey done and we took everything into consideration what the village and people would like to see. Uh, so we reached out to a landscape engineer and she drew up some plans for us. Uh, one of them was accessibility throughout the park. So you can see in this drawing, we'll have sidewalks throughout the whole place. Um, Let's see, where do I want to start? I don't want to jump all around the place. Um, what we're looking to do is have some, have the park make sense for all ages. So in it, there's um, an amphitheater and an enclosed structure. There's also another play set for younger children um, in that toddler stage. There's a basketball court that someone in our village wants to lead the charge on fundraising for. Um, and then there's also a tree house that you see over here that'll connect you from the main level down to the lower level. I get pictures of it too, so. It's more, there's a lot more involved. She did a great, a great job just um, providing us with photos. 
So what this is, is a game plan. It's not something we're looking to do within the next 12 months. Um, it's so if anybody approaches us like Rotary and says, we want to do something for the park, we have X amount of dollars, what can we do? We can provide them with ideas that we would like to see within the park. So hold on just a sec. Can we go back? Nope, this is perfect. Um, if you see, there's information boards and the idea was to keep history alive throughout the park and provide just little blurps uh, throughout walkways of history that's happened here in Antwerp. Um, okay. So here are some ideas that the engineer provided us with to create an enclosed structure, um, possibly something that could be rentable throughout the winter months, of baby showers, wedding showers, family reunions, and then we could also use that revenue to put back into the park. Uh, this is an amphitheater. There's a lot of praise in the park, um, Antwerp days, bands that play out in the park. So providing some seating for them as well. Thank you. Um, this is an idea for um, play structures that would appeal to a younger demographic. We wanted to incorporate some musical instruments as well. Here's the idea for the treehouse. As I'm talking through this, we haven't narrowed into any single project. These are just ideas that we consulted with the engineer on that maybe we can explore further down the road and possibly receive funding for, or have different groups that might um, want to pursue it. Here we have ideas for Entrances. Right now we have the cobblestone white um, <coughs> lower entrance. I don't, I don't know what to pillars. call them. What are they called? Pillars. Pillars. Yeah, yeah sure. Calling so, the park pillars. <laughs> yeah, there's three entrances to the park, and the idea is to have matching archways over all three entrances. Let me uh, hold on a second. I actually like that last one. Okay, go ahead. So as most of you might know, I'm a part of the Holly Beach Splash Pad Committee, but I'm also a part of the park board. So some of this does work together, and that was our idea, because we want everything to work together. Um, coming up this weekend, the park board has purchased plants for landscaping around the Veterans Memorial. This area right here will be provided by the Holly Beach Splash Pad Committee. That's something that we said that we would do. And then, can you go back to, to, the, to the other view of the front? There, that one. Oh, not that one. There. there what, you say there, I'm halfway right on the slide. This there one? you go. Yep. Okay. Yep. So what we're going to be doing this weekend is planting um, boxwoods and daylilies, rose bushes, and herbivitas to beautify the Veterans Memorial. So it's all planted and rooted before the Veterans Day ceremonies coming up in like two weeks. So that's what we have going as a park board. I'm presenting this to you guys today to just see, get your feedback um, as we move forward. If we can move forward, see if you guys are all on board with this. We do have surveys that we can provide you with that village members would say, Yes, we would like more accessibility within the park. Um, can you go back to the overview? The overview? The, the first like, slide. The yeah. <coughs> that one? Yep. So I forgot to mention, we are planning on doing parking. So parking spaces because with everything that's going on in the park that's one major concern that there's not anywhere for anyone to park we are also as a splash i say we as in the splash bag committee um in this project will include sidewalks over to this area where park station was um if in the near future it becomes parking area but right now there's just a slab like a concrete slab uh, we would like to as a park board make it more accessible, handicap accessible. So when there's Antwerp staying in the park, people can safely get across. And then the splash pad committee is going to put in this portion of the concrete. I think it looks real good. 
It's great. One of the things that, it's great ideas. that kind of what generated this on the park board was, if you take a look at our park, a lot of it is centrally located. So the wings, the outer edges are not really utilized. I mean, we have some structures that never get used and stuff. So we're trying to figure out how to stretch it out so that people have full use of the park. There's different things. Everybody's not kind of on top of each other. So this is one of the, the objectives of it. How many acres is the park? Three. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. 30. Just the upper level? Uh, well, I'm thinking the, like the, even the lower level because it looks okay. like there's a trail intended even down at the bottom maybe. We had discussed that um, if we can apply for grants and there's mm -hmm. just money out the wazoo for walkways, we're going to apply for it. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. So uh, surrounding villages or townships receive funds for Parks and Rec and we want to be part of that. Um, One thing that doesn't cost that much that mm -hmm. also looks good is using mulch paths too. Yeah. Yeah, we could reuse a lot of the trees that are getting bad. True. Yeah. <laughs> Grind them up. Yeah, we've I'm got not, a few. It is nice to have the landscape engineer because if we can mm -hmm. consult with her on those ideas, so having it in the lower level, it might get washed off um, when we have flooding. But that is a good idea further up, maybe. Mm -hmm. Love the amphitheater. It's a great idea. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's amazing how utilized the park is for Praise in the mm -hmm. Park, um, different bands to come in. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of modernizing, modern, modernizing the park yeah. with some new ideas and bringing some new stuff into the community. But the thing we really ought to keep is we got to preserve as much of the history of the park too, mm -hmm. preserving some of the old trees. I know some people are upset about trees being removed, and we're you know the park fences would become a big issue and stuff like that. So. Well, the the trees benches. are only being removed if they're dead. True. Mm -hmm. They're not being removed because we need the space. We're not doing that. But we still have, I think I've got five more trees that have to come down. They're just rotten. Yeah. Well, yeah. In the yeah. process of dying. And Most while being dead. on the well, park board, I've... them up to see if they leave this year. But mm. Since coming on to the park board, I've learned a lot, which I don't know if you guys know this, but those concrete picnic tables out there are actually historical. Mm -hmm. And I would never have known that. So the idea is to do those plaques to put next to them. Like, hey, did you know why we still have these concrete picnic tables? Because in 50 years, I mean, it'd be nice to know why. Why aren't these being removed and modernized? She's talking about in 50 years in the future. Yeah. 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 I'm saying later on. Part of the right to work program or whatever. Yeah. Because there's still some people that know what they're there for. Well, why not put it on a plaque? Yeah. I like the concept. Yeah. Oh yeah, excellent. You. We did receive today our ODNR grant for the splash pad, and we also received a plaque that we'll have to put up to oh, give cool. ODNR their debt, their credit and okay. stuff. So we're all in shape. And I might want to try to get that to you. Maybe I'll drop it off tomorrow, some because you can give it to Esther when you see her on Friday. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. There has been some talk. This is this is just top drawer. Very good sure. job. There has been Thank some you. talk about a canoe livery. Going in an area out there, or you know that at all? Canoe delivery? Yeah, so you, you can rent canoes to put your canoe in. I'm, I've I, not been involved in anything like that. that but I know, <laughs> um, the Paulding County Park Association has been. There's a gentleman outside the town that rents canoes and brings right, them and drops right. them off. So him put a station up at the park. I don't know. Okay. I just wondered if you had. No, but we, we have discussed um, making it more visible, letting people know. Um, I was playing with my kids there one day, and some people were playing on the playground. They're like, oh, we're from out of town. We're actually another state away. I go, did you know that there's a lower level? And they're like, no, I had no idea. I go, go check it out. It's really neat, because that is a beautiful mm -hmm. portion of the park that people just overlook, don't think that there's anything down the stairs. So we would like to clearly mark that there's a boat and kayak launch. Also, like, water stations mm -hmm. down in that area. What, what is your next step? Do you, do you have any plans for next step or now? I know you said you're going to be planning things in the park, but yeah. um, where are you going from here? It surprises me how quickly a next step can just fall in my lap. Yeah. It really does. Um, so the closest step to us is the landscaping around the Veterans Memorial. Um, then the splash pad will be installed within a month after that, and then the sidewalks will be created. And then we'll have to discuss what kind of funds we have available or what we would like to apply for. Uh, there was NatureWorks grant that was out there. Um, we explored that option, you know, but we have to have projects to apply for these. So that's why we've consulted with her. So if there's one that said something about sidewalks, hey, great, look at this. We have the drawings. 
let's apply for it. Yeah. Good. Do we need to give an approval for it to like so you can apply then, or are we good? Not at this time. Okay. No. Okay. How would that work? Maybe I can. Ask I you just know. would. I just would apply for it. Send okay. It down. Okay. I mean, we, 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 the council will have to approve for the acceptance of the grant. Yeah. Okay. And stuff, but um, we don't have to approve the plan or anything yeah. that just says this is official when she applies. Not really. Okay. Because uh, I mean. I would apply, she wouldn't apply. Okay. Because that's comes through the village. Okay. When you apply for the grants and stuff, though, it goes through the village's yes. name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. Correct. They say that, um, and that's just one section of it. So if there's uh, the VFW might have some funds available. Hey, do you know of any projects? Yeah. Well, yes, mm -hmm. yes, we do. We've discussed this. Would you like to be the sponsor of an amphitheater? And it'd be the VFW amphitheater. Yeah. yeah. Good. So we can start discussions, and if Rotary is interested in doing a project, we can say, this is what we have envisioned. Kind of like with the hospital and what they tried to do before with the workout stations in the yeah. park, which ended up actually mm -hmm. getting rolled into the splash pad project. Yeah. So yeah so there's the always people out there wanting to help the communities. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll eventually absolutely. get to a point where we'll try to create a list and have a dollar value to the list. So if somebody comes and just say, well, I got 20,000. Here's a project that's 20,000. Yeah. So we'll I don't know if I'm putting the cart this. before the horse, um, but Scott McMichael is um, seriously starting to amp up the basketball court mm -hmm. fundraising. Mm -hmm. And if you saw that on the drawing, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a general idea of where we wanted to position it. Mm -hmm. It's not set in stone. Uh, there are picnic tables, trees, pavilions out there. So we have to find the right space so we don't have to take mm -hmm. anything out or minimal things out. I mean, with an individual that wants to work in tandem with them to build another pickleball court, actually wants to build four pickleball courts. Cool. Evidently, there's a lot of people that use it. The young kids. Well, even, I mean, I guess they go over to the Mac gym and run it and stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, well, start raising money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. that was more than five minutes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank Thanks for that. Thank you. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. And it's Come in, ladies. Michelle, Nancy, and Keith, myself. Yep, good work. Well, Thanks right. for the work. Yep. Thank you. It's having big ideas. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank That's you, guys. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. So, the police report. Oh, George, leave. He's been coming in and out. Okay. Which way the police report? George, step back out. So, go ahead and start the meetings. Go back to him when he comes back. Let's see. Uh, Might want to touch on the reading reports here. Oh, yeah, the reading reports in here. Since it's good news. Yeah, everybody should have it in the packet. Hey, George. Hi there, how are you? Good. Sure. Here we go, Rita. Got the reader report, everybody? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Got questions for George, then? What's the chances of finding who's uh, spray painting the town? Well, we're looking into it. We've looked at everybody's cameras. The chances would probably increase it. Business owners like you buy cameras. Come on, right? <laughs> <laughs> just turn them on. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Plug them in. Yeah. We just, I don't know, every business that has cameras that we've checked, we haven't seen anybody walking. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I didn't either. George, did you have one of the cruisers worked on? Kenny had a question about something oh, yeah. out to the piers. Um, <coughs> when we get down they changed the oil, I think. Well, that's no, that's $1,100. $1,100. $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $
ordinance number 2023-11, ordinance authorizing the village finance, or fiscal officer to reside outside of the village of Antwerp. And this is the third reading for this. Is it the third? Is it? Yes. Yes. I'll we'll make a motion. I'll second that motion. That was Jason. All right. So Jason Franks. Yes. Dean Rice. Too. Yes. Rice Diamond. That's the. Steve Jordan. Yes. Kenny Reinhardt. Yes. Brian Smith. Yes. Okay. And then a second reading uh, resolution number 2023-07, a resolution declaring the necessity of construction, constructing or repairing sidewalks on the east side of the South Erie Street in the village of Antwerp, Ohio. I did have a, a moment we're talking about that. I did have a person call me and want to know why we're making these people pay the full price for the sidewalk when we did away some of the town property last week, month, month, last meeting. How can you justify Well, technically, we haven't given away any property yet, if you're talking about Doug's, because yeah. that we haven't given that away yet. It still has to go and get well, approved through council, so. But it will happen. Well, I, I mean. I, 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 just, don't, I don't know if it will well, it's, not, it's not a matter of giving the property away he, anyways. We still retain ownership. Yeah, it's just he, I mean, he, it's just he, a right he, of use. So he doesn't own it anymore. It's just he just got a driveway on it. Yeah. I, while we're on this, I am all for a sidewalk out there. I think we need it. But I am against making the people that are getting the sidewalk pay for it. I, I, I think they're being saddled with a a lot of expenses that they'll never see a good from it. Why do people can't afford that? Well, they can't afford it, and, and the, the argument is they'll raise your property value. Yeah, it will, but given that, they'll have to pay more taxes. Well, I guess since we opened the door on the subject, <laughs> I'm going to chime in myself on this uh, resolution for repair and construction of sidewalks. Um, back in 2016, the village applied for a grant and got funding for Safe Routes to School to put in sidewalks out on uh, East yeah. Canal. Yeah. And in that resolution of what they did, the village accepted 100% of the, the responsibility for a cost of improvements for all that out there. They never, the village never inflicted any of that upon the citizens that own the land. So the difference we got here is, is that the village knew there was funding we applied for grants and we got the funding and then we did the project um, where i'm at with the public safety committee and the financial committee when we was talking about doing this we feel there's a real need for that sidewalk out there i feel it's a public safety issue um, we started off with just trying to figure out how we was going to do it and then we presumed that we would just have the landowners put it in um, upon my investigation, that's when I come up with Resolution 2016-03, I text you all and asked you to read through it and look at it. So where I'm at with this, I personally don't care how this sidewalk gets put in. I just would like to see it put in as a public safety issue. Um, with that being said, and with what we did in 2016 on 2016 Resolution 2016-03, I can't support passing the resolution 2023-07 to have the people pay for it. I think the village should just pay for it myself. Um, I feel as though on the financials that we probably have the funding to do it and I don't see why it would be a burden upon the village to put that in in a, in a notion of public safety. I've been trying to get that sidewalk put in for four years or better and with COVID it got, it got put off. We thought we found a grant and then uh, I know Tim um, with uh, Pauline, Tim Coxie, yeah. thought he found some money and none of that came through. So we just keep kicking this can down the road. If we keep trying to get <clears throat> funding for it, I don't ever see it happening. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to throw out there now that we're talking about it, that when it comes to pass and I won't be supporting it next month, I think we should move forward with something, another alternative. That's all I've got to say about it. 
since we're talking about it. I, I just see, hate to see put a big burden on the taxpayers out there. That's a lot of money. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't uh, want to be saddled with it if it were me. That's that's a lot of money and everything's going up and electric rates next you month after standard going up. Money to do that. I would presume that the village has got the money to do that. <clears throat> There's, we could create a fund where we say we charge 50 bucks a month to everybody. Yeah. However, to everybody in the village. Yes. Okay. Because I already paid for my sidewalk. So. Well, and, and that's that's the <laughs> issue is, is if we put in sidewalks over there, we're asking our local people to 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 pay who've already paid for sidewalks to pay for their neighbor's sidewalks, right. and that's the issue here. If we put it in down there, but we've told other people, well, you have to tear yours out and put all new ones in at your own expense. That costs yeah. even more. Than somebody putting new ones in <clears throat> if we do it now it's going to cost less because i believe we can put it on people's property taxes at no interest and spread over five years which is going to be cheaper than making everybody pay 50 bucks a month forever like it doesn't make sense to enact a new tax to pay for sidewalks when we already have a lot of people who've already paid for them. Over a few short years, it's already gonna be paid for if it was spread over the property taxes and at no interest. That, and especially with the price of concrete going up, it's actually cheaper to do it now than to wait. And is that only and, going on the homeowners where the sidewalks are going or is that the whole village? Wait, you can't. I, I tried calling, I couldn't call. I just, sorry, go ahead. Wait, last week, you all, last month, you also said you didn't have a Facebook account. I have Facebook, but I don't do it. Not that that's any of your business. Okay, that's so your that, that's now. No, no, this you is not, relevant to our conversation. So, right. so yes, this would be for the property owners there. Just like I had to pay for mine. I am in full support of it. Now is the time to do it. It goes up more down the road. And if you can get a 0% loan for five years, I mean, you don't get better than that. And the town would be putting it in too. You also have the option of doing it yourself and saving yourself money. Did you talk to Dr. Miller? Like, is there more of that, the school, like yeah, what that right. deals with, the school, since there, I know there's there, There's funding kids. that's available, but we'd have to apply for it. And we probably wouldn't even see a dime of the money until 2025. Okay. Yeah, well, I just wonder because I know there's a, uh, one of the residents that was here last month has children that lives there that's on that way. So that's why I was wondering when you sent me that text message and I read that, then I yeah. thought, you know, like, is there a way we can put it into that there's school? Kids out here, right? Well, you know, there if we still some. get the grant, we should have been working on four years ago when well, I started this before yeah. and none of it happened. Um, I'm the one that actually brought this whole notion up of putting that sidewalk out there because I was coming home from work and I happened to go that way about three days, three times in a week. I was working out that way, and every day of that week, I seen some little kid out there walking along the road and there was a semi in front of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, like I, I just don't like it. Too. Yeah. So I feel it's a safety issue. Um, as far as the arguments on who's going to pay for it, I don't really care. Um, I just think it needs to be done, and I think our best course of action would be just for the village to put it in. Um, as far as repair and of the old sidewalks, that was something that I don't know when my sidewalk was put in, but the village made me repair my sidewalk at a time that I could not afford it, and I did it. Yeah. But I'm not going to use that as a reason to inflict this on the people out there. You know, my personal problem is my personal problem. I, I'm going to check that at the door. I want to do what's right sure. for the village. Sure. And repairing sidewalks is different than installing new sidewalks. People that install new sidewalks that built new homes, like the doctor's office that's out there, yourself and in addition, I don't know who else here has ever built new homes, that's in your bylaws of building in the village. Yeah. You have to put in new sidewalks. That's part of your construction cause. This is a total different deal what we're doing. I think it's apples and oranges when we're talking about sidewalk repair and sidewalk construction. Because I know I didn't pay for my sidewalk to be put in where I live. Yeah. My sidewalk's 100 years old, but I had to repair it. Yeah. So, and did I like it? No. 
Did I think the village needed to do that to me? No. Was there a safety issue out there? Not really, because there's nothing past my house. Yeah, we won't. <laughs> there used to be. I don't know what was, but the hotel was out there at one time, yeah. but there's mine, you know, kind of <coughs> the same like north end. And going that way, there's, there's, there's opportunity out there in that south end of town. We want to grow. And we want businesses to come out there. I know people have said something about if Dollar General goes away, will it ever be used? I feel as if Dollar General goes away, some other something business will move into that as a prime spot. Yeah. Dollar Tree. That, this should have been dealt with when Dollar General was given the approval to go ahead. Probably, but we can't turn back time. We can't. We they can't put Dollar back. General put their sidewalk in, yes. and the doctor's office put their sidewalk in, in, yeah. the, in the bylaws of new construction. Yeah. Now we just want to attach that together. The village owns land out through there. We've got a little, we've got a section or two. Um, the CIC has got a section. Then we've got all the residences there. Um, I still feel as though I want this to happen, but I'm not going to support making the people pay for this. Dean, we have quite a few new houses put in that don't have sidewalks. Well, and is that tr is that correct? That I'm not sure. that that's a possibility, but. I'm not exactly sure how that all is working right. out, where them houses are at that don't have sidewalks. I mean, if there was never any sidewalk there, I don't know. Because I, I really think, you know, Cruise Drive needs it because of all the kids going to yeah. the park. Yeah, mm -hmm. I looked at Cruise also. If anything, we were already going to lower that speed limit down to like 15. Yeah. yeah. It's a narrow road, too. Mm -hmm. I, think yeah. there's, I think there's a precedent that's been set with what Dean brought up that the village make sure there's there's sidewalks there that are high traffic areas and that sidewalk needs to go in it's got to get put in i mean just a couple of days ago i almost hit a guy walking on that yeah right out by there a couple, you know he, general he baggage every day yep yeah, you're, and, you're at the same road yeah road. i have so, yeah so and this is a big safety issue yeah, that's it is you know, and nobody disagrees I mean, that i'm not going to argue the point about the spot that we the other places we was talking about with Harmon Road and Cruz <clears throat> and the old 24 that goes out from Varner's Trailer Court back into the park. I'm not going to argue that those don't need it. Um, I just don't go that way and I don't see the traffic out there. That's not my normal course of yeah. traffic. Right. I come through 49 quite a bit. So I'm just observing what I've seen and that's why I had initiated this over four years ago, I believe. But so that's all I had to say about it. I've asked you guys to read that. I appreciate anybody that took their time to look at it and think about it. I, I, I just, when I left the meeting, I just didn't feel good about the whole situation. So that's why I tried to do a little bit of homework and find out what we have been doing, yeah. um, what other communities have been doing. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. So I just wanted to let everybody know how I feel about what's happening. Now, I know I'm the one who initiated this and I was all for making the people pay for it. But after what we've done in the past, I don't, I'm not comfortable with it. So, but I feel it needs to happen as quickly as possible. Whatever happens, this is going to set a precedent. Well, you already set the precedent. Well, that was with a grant. Well, that was, that was reading. Well, we, that we a had a grant. Yes. That was that's on us to get the grant, but we accepted a hundred percent of the mm -hmm. installation. The village did, but we Once, procured yeah. the grant. So now moving forward from this, this is a safety issue that we should have had the grant four mm -hmm. years ago but we couldn't get, or we should have found funding, or we should have did it. And if there's any other places that we want to, then that's on the village to try to find the money, I believe. Or if we feel as though it's a safety issue like we have on South Erie, then we need to just fork it up and do it. That's that's all I'm gonna say about it. So so we got a, we have a resolution, second reading, and we're, I'm agreeing with you that we don't wanna do that. We have a precedent set for, something different and I'm willing to make whatever motion we have to make to undo that and go in a different I mean direction. we could table this yeah. table the or the yeah 20 2307 and not proceed with it or we can let it come to fruition next month and then vote on it and see what everybody wants to do maybe that'll give us another month to think about it but yeah. I think from that point, then we need to be able to get ready to move. Um, right now, right, the resolution we got is going to put the sidewalks installed by this time next year, I believe. Yeah. Right in July. If, if we don't like what's going on with that resolution or that ordinance, why don't we craft a new, going forward, a new ordinance that defines exactly when and where people have to pay their own versus the village doing it. So there's none of this 
I think I went back and forth from now on. I think that's something we can talk theory. to Gabe about yeah. and find out what's in Gabe the building. Here. You can ask him. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to Brian. What's that? Can I can I ask your opinion? Uh, <laughs> sure. Is there something with the new housing that has the sidewalks installed? Like you know, with we the have, doctor's office did it and Dollar General did it. In the in the. Um, B2 zoning that then that would cover that south area on the east side. Anything in B2 would require the owner to put in sidewalks for, B2. for new construction for, for B2. Yeah, for a new construction. Well, right, it's like part of the it'd be on the application. I think it even says uh, here I got an application project zone and the B1 and B2 must ensure that sidewalks are presently in place on the property and in good condition or will be installed prior to the completion of the project. Additionally, it is understood that if the project results in the creation of four uh, off-street spaces, the site plan review is required. Yeah. So, but so only, got, the, only in business, okay. but then, you know, there are some areas that are multi-use business. There's nothing in residential that says anything about right. construction of sidewalks. Right. There might be something in subdivision rules, but um, so this is something that we probably need to look at through zoning. I'm guessing <clears throat> zoning or safety or we could what's the zone? zone? There's no zone. There's an ordinance that says there's no zoning permit required for sidewalks. Correct. I mean, it just it's a flat out no zoning permit required for sidewalks. So they could. Um, I'm not sure what you're saying. What do you mean? Well, what we're saying is typically a zoning permit is required any time that you add board. square footage to your living space. Okay. As so a general rule. Or value to you your wouldn't property. Have to add a yeah. Right. If you want to put a sidewalk in, you just go put a sidewalk in. As long as you're in the public right away. And the yeah. auditor doesn't care. That's a lot big part of the driving force of when you need a zoning permit. But there's now. nothing so, saying that if I add a room on that I have to not put a sidewalk in. That's not what you're saying. Correct. Okay. Right. So and I think that would be good. That would be a good rule that says, you know, any if you do if you apply for a zoning permit that you need to review your sidewalks and so what you said was anything in B one or B two, the property owner has to put in a sidewalk. For new right. construction. No, he didn't say new construction. Yes, uh, he did. Well, let's see. Okay, well, either way. We, now we you have to ensure that they're either presently in place on the property or and in good condition or will be installed prior to the completion of the project. And that's a condition okay. of getting a zoning permit. Okay. So what we need to do is, is have a committee come up with some rules that says what, if, if we are serious about wanting sidewalks. Yeah. Then we need to have something in place in where where areas. where residents aren't coming up here. Hey, why is this happening? If we don't have an ordinance on it, you know, instead of just precedents being set, maybe well, if something. Well, if it's in the zoning says, rules, of what new is the actual? It's in the zone. So we, that's something we just have to review on zoning. But I and I think we need to, and I agree with Bryce a thousand percent. We need to get something set down so we can say, hey, right there it is. Right, right. We could hand them, hand yeah. it to people. Yep. So, Gabe, new builds are they required to build put a sidewalk out? Not in residential. Not in residential. So it would depend. Not unless it's in the subdivision rules. So I think, right. and like I, I know think, for me, our, ours was in the subdivision rules that we had. But I just mean like, like random in the neighborhood. If there's a house that's built, they don't have to put out a sidewalk. Right here, I've got one. It's an infill. They're doing a shed, but. There's no check on their sidewalks or anything like that. Or it was a new construction. This house was just built in the last two years. There was no requirement that they put sidewalks in. But it's on the back, uh, you know, it's back in the new addition, you know, towards the end of a cul-de-sac. I'm not sure how much. Traffic, I mean, foot traffic. Yeah. That, that's like, not my public safety issues. What, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. What right. about like Cruise Drive? What is Maybe that? Maybe the council has. could identify corridors this is where i've been trying to get something going on a thoroughfare plan you know where are these these uh corridors where we're seeing a lot of traffic that you need to have something happen like that but you know it's um i think it needs to come from council to ask for something i think that the 
the commission would be happy to review it, but I think there's not a lot of willpower there to, to create, uh, yeah. pick rules. the direction and try and, and force the village to go in that way. It, if the council came out with, say, look, take a look at these areas, this is where we want some verbiage, can you address that, then I think the commission would be more likely to come up with something that, that you could uh, approve. Okay, thanks, Gabe. But just, but just to be clear, replacement or repair is up to the property owner, correct? 100%? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's not even defined in residential. Right. Okay. We need well, to there, we've got an ordinance that talks about that. Actually, you're right, and I was sharing that with Brian real quick. Melanie um, gave me a heads up of the discussion with the sidewalks, and she actually sent me an ordinance from 2008, three pages that discusses all about sidewalks. You actually do need a permit to even repair it, so on and so forth. Make sure everybody gets a copy of that. What's the number on that? 2008 what? 2008, what is that real quick, Brian? Uh, 2008-49. We we'll probably better give one to Gabe then too if it contradicts the zoning book. Well, yeah. I probably have it. I think there are there are standards for how it should be built, yeah. but there's not a, there's nothing in there that says like it has to be built in these areas or mm -hmm. yeah, that I don't think it says that. Right. right. But, but I think there was a there was a push to have certain areas done on Main Street and I think that was part of that push that they wanted it done this way and I'm, I'll take a copy of it, Brian, but I'm pretty sure I have it. Yeah, this printer's going to try to get it, so we'll see how this works out. I'll do my best. <laughs> sure, I need some more paper, too. There you go. Can't Everybody take loves them. Okay, um, so, so what are we doing? Are we, we're going to so let it go. Uh, so so where we're at right now is this is just a second read. Yeah. 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 We did that. Yeah, yeah. And, we had that. And we if we want to discuss more, if people want to go do some more homework and come back with a better solution or an idea and think about it for a month, um, bring something to the table next month before we vote or after we vote, and then we'll try to get something moving because I'm about guessing we could probably, I don't know, have somebody have it in by the end of before winter, if we really have. Yeah, that's what I would like. If right. we got all yeah. the council members together, we could probably <coughs> go build it in the time we discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> and until understand, July, understand, understand the bid threshold is 50000 There's a yes. chance this is going to be over. So it's going to have to be advertised, bid documents are going to be created, engineering uh, work has to be attached to it. That's already done. Then you have to go out for a minimum of two weeks. So this all takes time. This isn't going to just go. Uh, John I hadn't put in the mall. I think oh, I the bidding that. process yeah. becomes a problem. We'll break it in half into two projects. You can't do that. You'll get sued. You can't do that. No. It, it obviously shows that you're trying to break it in to avoid the bidding process. It's all one piece, you know. So, yeah. And, I, and I, you know, and there's a good chance it may come in slightly under fifty thousand dollars. That stuff. I mean, I can reach out. Um, I have one quote. I can reach out uh, to a second person to see what they they have a copy of it, what their pricing would be, and stuff. It's not we're not going to do the level of work that we would have done to ODOT because right. ODOT would require all the approaches yeah. to be replaced. In. We're going to put it in in the public right of way, so we don't have to have landowner permission or in the legal right of way. Yep. We'll put it in. And if we have to go around the tree, we'll go around the tree. We want to take a tree down. What about going around the water meter? We go around we'll, that too. We'll, we'll do all that stuff. Moving. We're going to try to yep. mitigate moving anything. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> yep. So if you want straight, that's going to be $100,000. If you want it in, we, maybe we can do we it for like 49 Well, it's, it's, you know, it's better than walking on the street. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You concur, sir. Concur. Okay. Okay, where are we at? First reading of. Resolution 2023-08. Sorry, that's my bad. I'll be there in a minute. That's all right. It's just simply to proceed with the submission of a police replacement letter. Would you like me to read it while you work? That's basically what it was. Oh. Uh, so I, <laughs> Brian's working hard over there. 
Okay, this will go on the ballot, right? Well, you have two more readings after this. For you, sir. Okay, and then the vote. For you, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, first reading that. Okay. Any committee reports? Let's move on to new business. I asked new business to go, yeah. go over. It's four pages, Ken. It's four pages. Oh, so oh. You, that was your whole thing. Oh, you yeah, this was, sorry. <laughs> I got one. Okay, so there's your. Okay, so everybody stop in. Everybody got one? Brian, did you want to copy that? No, sir. I'm going to read. You got surprised. I did, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. okay, under Thank you. under new vision, yeah. under new business, I gave you guys a copy. I just typed some things up. Uh, in conjunction with the Mummy Valley Planning, uh, we secured a quote to perform a topographical uh, geotechnical and structural engineering of Schaefer Road. We've got to do something. Uh, and, is, it, and is it getting worse? I haven't it, it's not necessarily getting worse. It's just at a point where you can't open it up. And if, you know, if, if we don't do something, it's the sidewalk issue. So I've got a price of $49,450 and I have the agreement. Um, I need to sit down with Kevin, look at where the money would come from. This would not be covered under any grant, but there is money through um, Ohio Public Works for bank slippage. So once we have this done, if they come back and say, yes, you have bank erosion, bank slippage, then we would qualify in theory for that grant. And that grant's 100%. So engineering's not reimbursed, but work going forward would be. So my recommendation is, is that we do it, we move forward, we find out what's going on. Um, because it's just... Jan, going way back years ago, we talked about... Uh, and, and, isn't that a, a scenic river and it had to be done a certain way? Look at that. I don't what? know if Schaefer Road was. Well, the, the river. The river is that from the down. park when they wanted to do work down there, but I don't know. I you have the to. Whole I don't know scenic. how much. Yeah, but you have to. It, it, you can do work as long as you stay above the flood line of the river. Okay. So okay. if we have to do any work and build a retaining wall, as long as we're above that, we don't have to have ODNR. We don't have to have the, the uh, Army, Corps. Army Corps of Engineer or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so, does anybody have an issue before I move forward with this agreement? No, it's going on long enough. Yeah, I, well, I agree. I mean, yeah. yep. Okay. So the next thing is Railroad Street project's been awarded. Uh, Cars of Construction actually put a bid in for about a hundred dollars, less than a hundred dollars more than the engineer's estimate. Once the commissioners have the document and they sign it, they'll notify me and then work can commence. Uh, we're probably, I saw that there was some language that had to be changed, so we're probably maybe two weeks or less out before the paperwork is concluded. And then uh, Mr. Couser and I will get together and come up with timelines and to begin the project. Are you talking about Ben I am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next thing is, is that we've been working on this and I've been working with Curtis and uh, to Mr. Frank's comments of last month, we're looking at actually doing um, a waterline reconstruction on West Canal from Erie Street to Wentworth. That's uh, predominantly all cast iron. That is where the majority of our breaks uh, between that and River Street take place. Uh, there is no uh, storm on that road. So the people that are uh, working with us on Schaefer will be uh, taking a look in the near future at what it would cost to do water and storm all the way down canal and then go north on Wetworth up to river. So we'd go into the railroad tracks. Uh, based on the linear feet and stuff, my guess is it's gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of $400,000. Um, we have a couple hundred thousand in our storm uh, fund that we charge on your water bills every month. And uh, OWPC will uh, give a um, matching grant up to 250000 so half of it would be paid through state funding and half of it would be paid through the funds that we have set aside over the years. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the projects we're looking at. Well, that's the project we're looking at um, at this time. Um, I did purchase orders for uh, 
street patching, crack sealing, and concrete repair throughout the village. So this summer we're going to be seeing people in town doing some work on our streets, um, filling in some concrete work where we have had uh, water main breaks, where we've had to uh, egress into the road and uh, dig and try to get that all cleaned up and taken care of. Um, I want everyone to know we installed new cameras at the uh, at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, they are active. They read license plates. Um, there is no permitting of uh, dumping off debris and things unless you are a resident. You cannot be a commercial entity and do so. You can't put anything out there that is three inches in size or greater. It can't be metal. Um, and that's in this paragraph. It's also on our Facebook page. And this I actually took from a, a prior ordinance that we had. Um, so anyways, those are working and they're supposed to be working on the ones in the park as well. I have not talked to uh, Schweller in the last week, but they were going to go out weather permitting. And then those yeah, are what's going to cost. I think combined, I want to say it was about twenty-seven thousand dollars. I think for the boat. Okay. Yes, for both. Yeah. And it may have been twenty-one thousand. I think the sewer plant was like nine, and the park was twelve or something. Like that. Okay. Um, in my conversations with the parcel that we were deeding over and gifting to the uh, Antwerp School. Um, things came up. It has not been taken care of. It requires a new survey. Parcel numbers were incorrect on the deed descriptions. And I think maybe at one time, maybe Paulding County changed the parcel numbers when they went to GIS. I don't know really why, but it was. Plus where they showed the street going across the parcel is not accurate. So I notified uh, Mr. Miller of that and a new survey would need to be done at their cost before we could move forward. And in that conversation, he brought to my attention that the current library is actually divided into four parcels. The village owns two and the school owns two. Their two is the majority of the parking lot. So they have asked if we would like to have the other two parcels, they would gift it to us and do the paperwork and transfer the uh, parcels to us. I told them it kind of made sense to me. We might as well own all versus half and stuff and uh, we just actually just realized it last Wait, couple of weeks. Ever happen. They, they owned it. Problem, at one time they owned it because it had to do with the school and then I, I don't know. He didn't even know. He was really kind of shocked to find out. So I just need to know direction from the village. Do you, would you like me to proceed in notifying the school that we would accept the uh, magnanimous gift that they want to give us? <laughs> Okay, who pays for the asphalt now when the parking needs redone? Well, um, they would. The library? No. The village is obligated under the levy to pay all expenses for the library. Okay. 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 To my understanding, I don't have a copy of the levy. So when they need a new flag, we get them a new flag. They need um, new lights. We put we, if they need light bulbs, we get them light bulbs. Yeah, we just relit that whole place four <laughs> years ago, five yeah. years ago. So, um, so we would uh, we'd be obligated to pay for a part of the parking lot. The school would be obligated to pay for their two parcels. But obviously, if we inherit the parcels, we would replace all of it. Or we would take and tear up half of it and turn it to grass based on the amount of people that utilize the library. Oh, we need that parcel. For, yeah. for the Ball we Association. We don't need I guess we go to the Ball Association and ask for a donation for parking. You probably could, because that, that thing is always full um, yeah. when there's games, because there's definitely not, I mean, even with the new parking they added, there's not enough parking. So. Yeah. And school bus drop. Could do a fundraiser. Yeah, yeah. What's that? The Ball Association could do a fundraiser. Yeah, well, they do the raffle tickets and the gun raffle and all that. So I don't know where all that goes to, but I mean. So back to back to my original question. Well, I mean, if you if, if you can make a motion if you want to, if you just want to give me direction, that's fine. I mean, because I just have to work with the school. Well, that's one. Well, this right now is when Mel would tell us we should make a motion. Yeah, I probably need a motion to make sure it's in I'll our I'll second our make a motion to give ours to the school. <laughs> so I, I'd ask the motion would include parcel number 12-28S005 
and 006. Those are the two parcels in question. Okay, I'll make a motion. That's um, the two parcels. That, the school ones. The school that we, we go yes. The school we accept one parcel. Yeah, 12, uh, 285, and 005, and 006. 28S. 20, I can't remember. 28S. Right. Yeah. I'm a second. <laughs> well, I'm reading it right here. Yeah. We're voting on this. Okay. I, was just, I was just looking at here. It only shows two parcels on the auditors. <coughs> I looked at it just the other day, and there's four. Okay. Uh, I must be looking at something wrong. Yep. I, Oh, I'm over. looking. I am looking at the wrong place. Yep, there's uh, four. Okay, so right. motion to accept, accept the parcels from the school. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Steve Jordan. Yes. Yep. And Jason Franks. Yes. yes. Bryce Stein. Yes. Uh, Kenny Reinhardt. Yes. Dean Rice. Yes. Brian Smith. Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Any questions for me? Oh, you know where I'm at? Oh, I know. Yeah, do you have? I'll make a copy of this folder. Yeah. Where you at, Kenny? I didn't hear you. Down, not too far from your house. Back by Franklin's. Yes, there's a big dip. Yeah. Well, yeah, that'll be fixed when they come in. They're supposed to come in this year until they regrind and redo 49, which would include that, because they're going to come through town and everything. Now, the catch basin, the catch basin by the mayors that has sunk slightly, when I talked to Mr. Lundberg, they're going to come in and take it out, raise it, and put it back in. Tell me, tell me this. Catch basin there's a box in the street with the grade yeah, on the thing with the pump, pump with the head. Why is one here and one over here and one over here? That's because they're connected to the storm. I don't I didn't put them in. I don't know. <laughs> I always wondered that. We should probably make it aesthetically pleasing. I think it has to do with where actually rainwater would generally set, and that's why they put them where they put them. But I, I can't answer that. I don't do roads. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 okay. just, I don't have an answer. We can write an ordinance that's the best way to do it. copy of that for you if you want. So do we still need to do a reading of 2308? Or did we do that? We did that. Are you talking about the first reading? The one that you did, you read? We're in all that official. We're a new business. Yeah, oh, he, he gave us one. Oh, he did give one? I, oh, I didn't We're still a new business if you have any. Yeah. There's did a couple you, things I'd like to bring up whenever it's my turn. New business or old? I think it's new. Okay, go ahead. Uh, but it is, I mean, I, it does I have something I didn't to. Know. I didn't have one is there so. some way that we could pass a RITA tax incentive for people who want to join FIRE and EMA? A RITA income tax incentive where they would be exempt or pay less <coughs> or something? I think we. it was mentioned last month, and yeah, I think it it's a fantastic idea. We didn't do anything about it, and I would like to see that done. I would like to see well, that I, done. I have, a, I have a comment on that. Mm -hmm. I'm all in favor of doing something, but like the EMS, there's a lot of them the EMS, and only a certain few going runs. Going right. runs and the rest of them. So is it the same way on the fire department? It is the same way on the fire department. So there are it, people who actually live in the finance. Is there a way that we can reward these people? Well, I'm not sure that you could actually use RITA. I mean, you know, it's, it's a standardized tax deduction. I, I, I don't know that that is a mechanism that you can do. I don't know that RITA would even permit it. Um, well, and this was room. an incentive to get new members. Yeah. It wasn't the ones that were already on. Well, it, it would probably apply right. to those yeah, two. They, 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 they knew you'd have to cover Yeah, you'd have to cover everybody. I, I think we should do something, but I'm not sure the reader is the right there, there, Dan and I have been to a meeting, and I've talked to Tim Copsey, and, and uh, there's the governor is aware of the problem, and he's doing some works to bring um, more training. Um, uh, 
uh, and benefits to the firemen and the EMS personnel that are coming on. I mentioned to Tim Copsey about the that what Bryce brought up about the read attacks and abatement on them, and he was and he didn't know, but he he's supposed to be getting back with me on that. And uh, so there there are very aware, and it's not just Paulding County or Ohio; oh, it's across the nation. And and there are some actions rolling that are supposed to help the problem. There was an article. Um, where did I see that? Um, I think in the Defiance Crescent, the Defiance had a problem with it, and some of the things that they yeah. were doing with yeah. it. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was at the LEPC meeting. They said it could be done, and we had to vote on it as an ordinance on our council to change the rules on taxation of RETA, which was I think last time it was passed in 2018. Now, of course, I think our solicitor should be the one to confirm that not council member bryce however I, I do think i'd like to see this move forward uh, I and i would say they have to meet so many runs a year to get the break to make sure we have people who aren't on it that actually are not doing anything because i know that would be the case and that's not new them. because because that's already documented how many yes. you've made this year that's right year. yeah so if, if there was i don't know if that's a personnel committee or or what but I'd like to see what we can do to reward the people who, and try to incentivize others to come along. Well, I know when Fire Chief Bob Addis was here, his was to entice people to join the fire department mm -hmm. and EMS. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about already existing firemen and EMTs. Retaining them. Yep. Yeah, I think we'd have yeah. to cover them. <clears throat> what if we did yeah, yeah. one yeah. and for all? Yeah, yeah. they would just quit and join people. But yeah. leave the old ones. Just quit and come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. <laughs> Start over. Yeah. Yeah. They're up to 19 people now, which is the highest they've been for 19 for the fire and EMS. Fire. But do they fire get, alone. Do they I don't know what EMS is. They get paid so much of run, and that's it. And they get paid, they get paid to go to a meeting. Okay. And then they get paid, they have to participate in a run. If they don't, they don't get paid. Right. Correct. Right. If they don't don't do a run. There's nothing. Right. You know. You get paid. They get, get paid, paid for training to get, too. Right? Paid, yeah. Training yeah. hours. What would happen? If meeting we, hours. What would happen if we increased their pay per run? <clears throat> I, we we, were we told, talked about that in financial. We were told that was already set by the state. I think. No, that's Where not we, set by the state. I think the council regulates. Because that. it's volunteer. Because well, I suggested they, they that are now though, ago. They are now not volunteer firemen. They're part-time paid firemen. That status would change, and that so it might be regulated by the state. Yeah. But they're paid. Know, they're man. paid any part of an hour if they have a fifteen-minute grass fire. Right. They're paid any part of an hour, or they're they're paid for an hour if they're if they participate in any part of an hour, and then each hour after that. So what are they called now? Part-time paid firemen. Part-time paid firemen. Okay. I would I would like to see us if we could increase their pay to make it more. If, if you would like, because um, I've, I've been, this is one of the things I've really been hammering on since I've been on, I will contact him and see if he's found any more out about that, possibly even where he popped his side, because I know Roy. Okay. And, and um, I'll, I'll do that and report back next week. Because you, you have something very valid. We have to do something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a house over by the football field it has fallen trees down and also lots of like it looks like it's abandoned is does anybody know what's going on with that it's That's just Mises. north of the football field you talking about the, the mobile home yes yeah it's in probate okay they both passed without a will okay is there okay does that mean it's going to go up it's just going through the courts now and mm -hmm. waiting mm -hmm. okay so there's not much the village can do. It's yeah. a house trailer. Yeah. There's three trees that fell down or half oh, fallen big down. One. Big, big one. Big one. Yield Meredith property. Yeah, they used to sell fishing bait. Yeah. So there's not much we can do to help clean that up, is there? No. Yeah. It's private property. Okay. Because the grass hasn't been mowed or anything. But okay. And then one I have one last thing. Um along the railroad tracks, after they replaced all the ties. I mean, I'm glad they replaced the ties, but they just kind of left. It's kind of a real mess. And I was wondering, you know, if somebody did that with a house remodel and just threw it out in the yard, we probably would do something about that. Is there anything that can be done to say, hey, 
clean it up, at least in the village. Not with the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, they went, they went and uh, graded that, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They've been working on it yeah. since they were out yesterday and stuff. Yeah. But well, and, you know, and I think Patriot will come through eventually. But I mean, they got I think 110 miles of track, I, and so it would take them quite a while to pick up all the pieces. You, but I agree. Do you have contact with them? Mm -hmm. Could you just maybe you just reach out and say you guys got plans on cleaning this up? You buy the large situations and say, oh, and by the way, you could. Did you load that stuff up when you do? <laughs> yeah, well, truck. it's uh, yeah, big trip. It's yeah. pretty heavy stuff too. Yeah, it's all railroad it. ties. Uh, you know, some people have gone along and tried to clean up a, yeah. clean up some, but your trash bags don't hold it. I know mm -hmm. a guy. I know a guy that's got all of what's called mm -hmm. furnace off their yard. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he heat the hot water. Huh? The heat hot water and everything. I know he heats his house. Yeah. yeah. And he and he burns railroad ties in it. That's but if you could at least contact him and just tell him how it's just concerned. I'll reach out to him. I'll reach out to him. See what they do. I'll reach out and ask him if they have any plans on coming through to beautify their... Well, I know, like, in Fort Wayne, they have the, uh, uh, the clean-up in Fort Day where places get together mm -hmm. and draw in volunteers and they go around and clean things up too so I don't know if maybe they didn't have a problem if somebody wanted to organize something like that just to be on their property picking the, up the, stuff the, but the I don't is, pick you, up railroad ties with me easy. If you pick them up then what do you do with them? <laughs> Don't take them to my compost pile. He knows your license plate number. That's now. right. I'll bring them back. Is that old business or do we have any old hey, business? I do have a question for you. I got old business. Somebody asked me branches you can take out the compost. Mm -hmm. If you have boards, old boards, what do you do with those? That's construction material. You yeah, can't I, take I know, out. I know. But I don't. You, you know where? Burnham. Have a cookout. You know, you know the, the, the veterinar veterinarian's office is on 49 North of Hicksville. Who? Go 49 North of Hicksville where the veterinarian's office sets on the yeah, corner. Yeah. Turn right. Go down to the first road and turn right again. And the um, corrections mm -hmm. place out of defiance has a dump down there. And on the first and third Saturdays of the month, I think. I know the first Saturday of the month in the mornings, you can take anything down there. Old, old anything, boards. Anything. Yep. And and they'll come out to your vehicle and look and see what you've got and say, okay, you can dump that. It's going to cost you $14. And you back up and they unload it for you and you're on your way. Really? Mm -hmm. What's the name of the place? You know? I'll get with you. Later. No. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I think there's one on Lake Avenue. It's, it's the Defiance County. Yeah. The Defiance yeah. County dump will take it too. You take yeah. it to the landfill. Yeah. It, it's under Defiance County. Take it out of state. Landfill, right? I think. Oh, I don't Defiance know that. County. That'd be a question for somebody that's okay. more Surely intelligent. It's fine, <laughs> and, it, and it's cheap, and they'll unload it for you. Okay, I was just I was okay. cut them up, throw them in your trash can. Yeah. Yes. Jason, do you have something? Because he's put cameras off, and I can't take it off. No. Go ahead, Jason. So back to the water line replacement priority list. So we got one on here. But what the reason I was asking for a list is so we have, you know, a basically a hit list that we we've got a plan for what we're going to do after that and mm -hmm. after that and after that because there's a lot of lines that need replaced <coughs> I think and we yes. could be thinking about where we're going to get funding, put dollars to every one of those projects so we have it in front of us and we know you know what what we want to do. I understand that, but it, it, it's not that simplistic because in order to put dollars to a project you invest in engineering so you're engineering at Schaefer Roads 49-4 yep. yep. so I mean you have to you have to go in these I mean there's not too many water lines in this village that probably do not need replaced we have whatever's plastic is good but we have we have cast iron we have cement um, we have other stuff so I mean it's it's is yep. the problem that we don't know where they're all at? It's not a problem that we don't know where they're all at. It's a problem that a lot of the water lines were construct, constructed not in a loop system. So they dead end. Okay, They yeah. dead end at the end of your street. Well, that's not the proper way of doing it. They should loop back so there's continuous circulation. Right. So you, it's kind of like a, a puzzle. You have to start putting the pieces together. And Curtis and I have sat down and we've talked about it. It's just it's, it's overwhelming from a cost standpoint and stuff so we can have a list 
but I can't put a dollar value to it because I don't know what the engineering cost is going to be and nor do I know the material cost. I think the key is I'm not asking for an exact cost. I'm asking for an, just an estimated cost of what we think it's gonna, what it's gonna be. I don't need engineering numbers, nothing like that. Just, let's just have an idea of what's in front of us. That's all I'm asking for. I'll work on it. Thank you. The only, the only thing I've got, I've contacted um, Mrs. Crick at the museum, told her that we are now prepared to give them the, the modern species permanently belong to them. She said we talked about it and they're afraid that they're not going to be able to take care of them properly and they don't want them. So I've talked to Mrs. Phoebe who now owns them and talked to her today as a matter of fact. She said I pretty much have got things ready to go and I'm working with Jan to see when our guys can go pick them up and bring them down. She said there's animals upstairs too. She said I don't know what they are but they're big tall things. She might have a giraffe up there. I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's apparently uh, great blue heron. It's a big mounted bird. She, so um, I don't know how they got there. I don't know who took them there. But she, we're trying to coordinate now so we can get them out of her way because she's been very patient and and we'll take them to the. And then what we have to do, um, as laid down by the, the Fish and Wildlife Service, once we take them there, I'll get hold of the game board and then we'll we'll um, document them and then we can do whatever we want to it. Even the eagles, if we want to dispose of them, we can. If we want to give them away, we can. But because they were mounted back in the 30s. Can we so, cut it up for auction? That, yeah, you're in charge of that. <laughs> Here's a question I have. We know, based on the paperwork that we have, we know what we agreed to and what we gave him at the time of the agreement. How do we know that anything over and above that agreement actually even is ours? That that it didn't come, because she may not know, didn't come from a third party source. Like Dr. Bricker or when he gave I, I'm just work. saying, yeah. we're, get, we're, we're getting ready to go out and clean out a house full of things that we know we gave X, but now we're doing X and Y. Yeah. And I'm not sure that the extra stuff that. is even. There's no inventory sheet. They're, like original, no, like from what no. we passed on uh, originally, or uh, uh, I think there is on the document. It, it talks about you know some birds or something like that. I'd have to pull it back out because I did look at it because um, I found like, it. Not a specific number or you know like no. A it talked it talked about them being in a case or something like no, that. That I thought he done. was only interested in like waterfowl. What's that? Yeah, it was like ducks or something. Yeah, and there's some other stuff upstairs. I have no idea. She doesn't know what it is. Okay. The only we did document what's up the depot now. I I had like and um, a couple weeks ago, and we will do the same thing with this once we get it in our possession. Then we do whatever we want. Yeah, when I'm at like an older list to compare to oh, your list, so we you know if there's he, 14 ground he squirrels asked for that appear nowhere. List when he got the thing from somebody, and from God, it was never provided. Yeah, okay. it was never provided. Dean, do you Maybe. know how he got it? Did our guys move it to their home? I, I'm I sure. Know. I think he moved it. We'd have to ask I Sue. He, that's that's I'm what pretty I was sure he wondering. Moved it. If, I'll, I'll ask her. I mean, I can't swear on the Bible, but I'm pretty sure that what he's got came from the Earhart collection. I don't think he's got anything from anywhere else. Yeah. Because okay. what he ended up with was more than what he could put on display, but he couldn't stand to see him disposed of. I mean, he just thought it was too, too neat yeah. to dispose of it. Okay. And that's about all I know about that. Is that it? Motion right. to adjourn. I'll make a motion. You don't have a report? No, I don't have one. Okay. Brenda, motion to adjourn. Don't no. have one. I'll um, make a motion. Did you get, get a second? Me. I did not get a second. I'll second it. I'll go. Bryce, beat you to it. Okay. All right. Uh, Steve Jordan. Yes. Bryce Steiner. Yes. Jason Franks. Yes. Kenny Reinhardt. Yes. Dean Reister. Yes. Bryce. Yes. <laughs>